Welcome to Marketing Mash, brought to you by TheMarketingScope.com. Okay. Well, actually, what's funny, David, is that as I was making fun of you when you were here and when you were here saying, well, I was going to introduce him and say, this is a guy with some deep experience in mobile and, you know, rich media, and he can't figure out, oh, wait a minute. Um, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. The tone and the tenor of our show, the Marketing Mash Show, is that we're very relaxed and we like to have a lot of fun and we have an audience of smart Alex that you will see here over on the right hand side. And so it's a really fun 30 minutes. And, and thank you so much for coming. And for everybody here that's listening and for people that are watching later, David is the founder and the CEO of Decisive, and and um, it's a relatively new, it's a startup, right, David? It's a new platform. And um, it's all about using data to maximize the impact of your content. And I'll let him describe that a little bit more. Um, but the backstory about, about my relationship with um, David is that here's what happens when you send me a cold email. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I ignore you because you're an idiot. And sometimes I may actually look at what you send to me and, and I, I looked a little bit at what David sent. I thought, hmm, well, that's kind of interesting. And then I actually clicked on something that he had included in his cold email, and which is very rare. And then I thought, you know what? This really has a lot to do with what I write about, what I think about, and I'm interested enough in his platform. And oh, by the way, we need a guest for tomorrow's show. <laughs> so guess what, the David? The stars were aligned. The stars were aligned. <laughs> for letting me twist your arm. It's awesome. And so yeah. now, you know, you're in the hot seat. So tell us a little bit about yourself and about um, Decisive. And we're, we're, we're really interested to, you know, pick it apart. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thanks for the time. I really appreciate it. Um, and this is, this is going to be fun. Um, I, I'll give you a little bit of background on myself. I, I've been uh, in, as, I'm, as you mentioned, I have been in mobile for some time. Um, I helped launch a couple of the first uh, mobile subscription products. So, you know, before there were uh, phone, before there were smartphones, there were feature phones that had ringtones and wallpapers and stuff like that. And so we built a pretty significant uh, uh, business around acquiring customers really cost effectively. Um, and so we, we built a really big business and it was ultimately sold to Clear Channel. And, um, and then I kind of, I, I moved on and uh, we were kind of thinking about what to do next. And um, I had a, a seedling of an idea uh, which uh, evolved from being a text message platform to being a mobile advertising platform. So we, so I have a team of seven people here. We're based in New York and uh, we've been working together since about 2012. And in uh, 2014, we launched a, a mobile advertising, I guess, Late, late 2013, we launched a mobile advertising platform. And uh, what that did, you know, we, we allowed people to kind of come on and set up uh, kind of mobile advertising campaigns. And we would place ads across mobile phones. And, um, and what we realized over the last couple of years was that, you know, ads are changing. Um, they, they just fundamentally are. And the way that people are interacting with ads, um, they, they have a choice, you know, with the rise of ad blocking, they have a choice whether they want to interact with your ad or not. And so uh, we, we really, uh, we, had the for, we, had, we were fortunate enough to be uh, one of 10 startups selected by Disney um, to work with, uh, work with Disney and work um, and kind of take on a little bit of investment from Disney. And what we worked on was basically uh, a, a, a technology that looks at, um, that kind of hopefully our goal is to enable uh, uh, people who are posting to social media to uh, look at the data, the unstructured data that they're not getting directly from the platform. So what's the size of the image? What's the color of the image? These things are very impactful to how and whether people interact with their content or not. And so we, we built this platform and what we realized is that uh, most most people in social media know what happened, you know, so they probably use Buffer or Hootsuite to look at the analytics, but they don't actually know why it happened. And so our goal is really to kind of unearth those findings and then hopefully uh, enable you to create uh, content that engages because you have better information about why. So your platform is all about being able to quantify emotion 
Yeah, so our what we're doing is we're taking the quality what's traditionally thought of as qualitative data. Um, so what are what are people saying? Um, what emojis are they using? Um, and, and and making that quantitative. Um, so uh, so basically, what we we do is we look at image sizes. We look at you know what's in an image. Uh, we look at you know we look at a whole host of factors, and then we kind of quantify them and say show you how that impacted um, impacted the content. And we really believe it's the future of. I mean, in the title, you know, the the idea we did a, a BuzzFeed content teardown not too long ago. We really believe that this is the uh, future of content and distribution. Is that you know you have uh, there are two, and today when we look at social media and how people distribute across platforms, there are lots of people who are saying Facebook is uh, Facebook is slowing down the traffic that I'm getting. Um, you know the the you know, I'm getting less and less traffic across these platforms, and then you have co companies like up, um, like BuzzFeed and uh, you know Nine Gag, and these there are certain companies that are thriving, and so they're thriving because they are really looking at the data and analyzing why consumers are interacting with their content, and I think that you know every 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 brand that creates content on the internet will have to be thinking about this. So, so what about when you look at that data? How do you how do you react or what's act. actionable yeah yeah, yeah. What's yeah. Actionable. Hold, on, hold on one second hold on one second i just want to let you know that you're asking um crowded head i'm sorry i don't know your name brett, it's brett cornell hi brett i'm sorry um you're asking some really good questions and we will get to those i promise you so i just didn't want you to think i wasn't paying attention to them because they are yeah. awesome questions questions that i want the answers to too so now yeah. go ahead, david i'm sorry to interrupt yeah. So, what's actionable? Um, the, so, these are these are really great questions. So, uh, what one of the things that we find, depending on depending on the brand and depending on the platform, um, that you know, uh, so for example, sizes of images. So, we find that in some cases, uh, square images work better than rectangular images. Sometimes we find the color has an impact. Sometimes we find that when you put a hashtag in a piece of content that you post, it actually has a lower response rate than when you have a higher, um, depending on the platform. Um, and so, uh, and sometimes when you ask the audience a question, it has a higher response, sometimes it has a lower response. So looking at all of these, uh, and then we do some fun stuff around, we just started to dig into emoji. So looking at emoji, it can be a proxy for uh, what, 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 what thoughts or feelings that content you just posted evoked. So if you look at it, if you look at a piece of content and it has a specific emoji, it'll mean it means that it'll ultimately be shared more or, or get more distribution because it, it evoked a certain emotion which caused people to share. Um, and so this is the so the idea. What's the, I guess the answer to what's actionable is looking at looking at and you can do this manually. You, you don't even have to use decisive, uh, but you can do a lot of these things manually. You know, run the A/B tests and then kind of run the data on how people are interacting with these different A-B tests, and then you kind of make the next decision. Um, and I think that's the, so for example, if you find that hashtags perform much better than you add them, or if you ask a question, you find that, you know, that performs better, you add them. Um, and so these are the findings I think, you know, hopefully you can take action on. Um, they're kind of very clear, distinct. This is what happens when you add a hashtag, or this is what happens when you're, you don't add text to your image post on Instagram. Or this is what happens when you you upload a red image versus a green image, um, and so that these are the things that we think are, are going to be actionable. And did you say that there's also, or did I read in your in your presentation? Because unlike Eric, I actually prepared for this mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, did I read in your slide share presentation that you also have the ability to evaluate, analyze video? Could you talk? If so, am I right? Yeah, so right now our video is really, really, really early. Um, so we just we just added YouTube a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, essentially what we're doing initially is we are um, the first version is just analyzing the response to the video, but over the coming I guess over the coming weeks we'll we'll start to kind of dig into the the length of the video as well as uh, analyze the words that are actually said in the video, whether there's music in the video. Uh, so our technology is, is, again, meant to kind of rip apart all these unseen factors and kind of quantify them and show you why, show you actually what is correlated with better response or not. So so I haven't 
looked at your platform at all, but so but what I'm thinking a brand or an agency might be able to do is use your platform and say, you know, here's kind of just plug in, you know, here's what we're doing on Instagram. Here's what we're doing on Pinterest. Here's what we're doing on Facebook and, and evaluate those things so that you have a formula to incorporate into your strategies moving forward. And oh, by the way, my results will be completely different from the next brand or agency's results because our content is different. Our audience is different. Everything about that is different. So I'm supposing that what your platform does is allow you to kind of take a deeper dive into the content, especially as it relates to visual content. Yeah. And um, now I do see, I, I see, you know, great value in the analysis of video in terms of music that resonated or, you know, did it have um, words in it or whatever. I mean, I think that's really interesting as well, but that's really how you see this platform being able to deliver value. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think that, so that, that intuition is 100% uh, correct. Um, a lot of the industry today, uh, you know, there are tons of best practices, right? So, you know, you read a best practice doc, you apply it, you may or may not see the lift um, from that best practice blog that you just read. Um, and it could be because your audience doesn't respond the same way as that, you know, the person who wrote, wrote that blog, blog post. And so what we do is, and it's, I would say I, I love the interface, but it's, it's a very visual interface. It's really focused on visual content. Um, so firstly, you go into Decisive, you add a public profile URL, you can add your pro public profile URL, you can add uh, a competitor's public profile URL. Um, what we do is we pull all the content into our platform and then we analyze every attribute of it. Um, and then we analyze, we also analyze the response. So we'll look at the, uh, the not just the likes and the, the volume of comments, but we look at the number of app mentions that uh, that post had. We look at the number of shares it had. We look at the sentiment um, that it had. And then we roll all of that up into one simple score that you can then kind of use to benchmark your overall account against other accounts or each individual uh, content, uh, content item that you post. Um, against each other. And so that's kind of the, you know, it, and so it really a lot, many of our brands are using it for competitive analysis because they can look at, you know, what, and we just did a, a video of how uh, we looked at, um, I think we looked at uh, Kohl's, Macy's, Best Buy, Dick's Sporting Goods, and we kind of brought up all the content that they posted last holidays. And then we kind of showed what what are the top what were the top performing content items for each one of those brands and then what were the responses to it and why why it worked and so it's 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 and it's very it very significantly by brand so i think your intuition is correct david help me understand something so in the platform is it is it all social channels or are there other channels like the blog or even email marketing or different different vehicles like that yeah so sorry about that yeah so today we support four social channels uh they are facebook uh pinterest uh, YouTube and Instagram. We don't yet support Twitter, uh, yeah, but we focus primarily on the visual platforms. The, the visual platforms, yeah, got that. Yeah, um, and Pinterest is really fun. Um, we, we, we're seeing lots of interest around Pinterest because it doesn't necessarily have the robust ecosystem around it as well as Instagram. Um, so we'll pull out, for Instagram, we'll pull out gender who's interacted with your, with your photos. Uh, we'll pull out, you know, the colors of those photos, um, you know, the likes of shares and all those things, and we'll kind of show it, show it to you. And then we make the comments searchable, which is also really cool. So we pull out, you know, certain keywords. So if you post a piece of content to Facebook um, or, you know, or Instagram, we'll, we'll find the most commonly used phrases and we'll show those to you and you can sort and see what people are actually saying really, really easily. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unique because it focuses on the qualitative, but then tries to kind of make all that kind of consumable and actionable by making it all of it, all of it quantitative. Well, this is probably a good time for one of Brett's earlier questions. I mean, so then how do you measure across channels? Um, example, TV, iPad, mobile, et cetera. Or do you? Or do you? Yeah. Well, I mean, 
Yeah, so that, I mean, that's a great question. We don't distinguish right now because we actually don't get that data. So we use the public APIs from the platform. So we right. don't get a distinguished uh, a source of that content. Um, what we do find, so we can make inferences. So for example, with Facebook, the reason why we, you know, we find, and it, this is not always the case, but square images work better because they just fill the screen right. um, as opposed to rectangular images, right? So they're, you know, they're kind of full and, you know, your eye kind of catches a lot of it. So there are all these inferences that you can make, but we don't we don't look at it across platform. We don't look at it across channels. We just look at the individual platform or the platforms themselves. Right. That's what I would guess. Um, do you? This is obviously a perfect fit for the B 2 C brand for big retailers. I can totally see that. Um, do you have any clients? And I know this is also, you're kind of in the early stages. Do you have any clients that are in the B2B space? No, I mean, so it's funny because we are using it ourselves, right? So we're trying to eat our own dog food, right? So we're looking right. at um, other companies in our space. Um, so, you know, let's look at the news credits and the percolates and the buffers and the hoot suits. Right. Uh, and, you know, so we've loaded up their Facebook profiles and we kind of watch them um, and kind of look at what they're doing and look at why they get those types of responses. Um, uh, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn are obviously the largest, you know, if you think about B2B clients, you know, these are the platforms that, you know, we, I think we'll eventually move into. But yeah, I mean, so we, we try to use it and think about ways that we can learn, if, if nothing else, just learn from what our competitors are doing and look at the comments that they're getting. And then, you know, try to, you know, if there are specific comments that we're seeing that are keywords that, you know, their audiences are using, well, you know, we'll kind of try to learn from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think for B2B, you know, B2B marketing in general is, I mean, tr trying to find the channels, you know, content marketing, I think, is a godsend to B2B marketing because, um, you know, uh, before you didn't really have many channels to reach businesses outside right. of the trades. Um, and, you know, my, early on in my career, I did, uh, I, I sold uh, tech, I, I sold um, technology media packages at a company called Tech Target. And, um, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. so, you know, yeah, so I, I did a lot of lead gen and that kind of stuff, selling lead gen packages. And those were the yeah. only channels you really had, right? Those were the only I think channels. I bought from you, David. <laughs> Maybe if you bought on search enterprise Linux or search mobile computing in 2003, Maybe, but I didn't, I didn't sell much at that time, so. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? You weren't very good? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think there are people who are much better at the direct sell than I am, so. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Um, so let's see. I'm looking at a question from Lindsay I had in my hand, and then I kind of scrolled up a little bit. She wanted to know about emoji. She, do emoji influence how a person will feel about the content regardless of the content's actual sentiment? I suppose, probably. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so we find two interesting things. Um, so two interesting, really interesting trends when, uh, uh, when content is posted. The first one is that there's a tone that's taken from, um, I, I don't know if many, I think, you know, probably the, the, the best, uh, content marketers realize this, but there's an actual tone that's taken. It's almost like our conversation, uh, where if you're more serious and stern, then the entire con, the entire uh, set of comments will take on that tone. Um, or if you use specific keywords, the entire set of comments will take on that tone. Um, also, what you'll also see is that um, early on in the comments, if there's a specific type of commenter or comment tone, that will actually kind of determine the direction of the post itself. And probably it's because of Facebook's algorithms and how they appear and you know where it appears and people who interact with it. Uh, but we do see that you know if you use emoji, people will use that emoji and take on that tone. We see early usage of emoji drive uh, uh, successive usage of the similar emoji. And then we see uh, specific emoji based on the, uh, based on the account um, driving additional engagement. So, for example, with BuzzFeed, um, if you go to the slide share, you know, the, the number one indicator of success is humor. And if, if BuzzFeed makes people laugh, the, the post will go viral. And then conversely, 
um, you know, sour posts, uh, are, based on our score, we see them perform significantly lower. Um, and so, you know, there is real, there, there's kind of, I mean, it's, it's like any conversation, social is a conversation, right? So if I, you know, if I walk in and I use a certain tone, people will pick that up and they'll, you know, they'll, or if I shake my head, people will also nod my head. If I smile, people will smile. So did you say so sour doesn't work well? Is that the word you use, sour? Sour? Yeah, what uh, was the word you uh, sad. Sorry about that. Sad. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sad. Yeah. Sad, okay. sad. Sad content. Yeah. 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 Uh, no sad. Yeah. Don't. Buzzfeed sad. It's not well, I, I got a question. So for your yeah. platform, you know, I get that it tracks all this um, activity and emotion that's going on, but it, it, it's tracking from the brand's perspective, or can it also track um, and follow what maybe influencers or customers um, are saying and what's working from that perspective? For example. Um, you know, I'm a brand, I'm Nike and Shelly's a big fan of ours and she posts some beautiful pictures and some things and it's getting a lot of attention. Will we learn from them as well? The, the customer or influencer or yeah. is it just what the brand is doing? Uh, so what you're saying is, so we don't look across the marketplace. There are many listening tools today um, that you, that brands use to identify what, uh, you know, what consumers are saying. Um, and so we, you know, we, we wanted to kind of keep the scope of the problem that we're trying to solve really, really tight, which is let us tell you what you can do better with the content that you're already posting. Um, and, and, you know, who knows where the product goes? We're a very customer driven company. So if that's a request then we may build that, but today we focus on, um, you know, almost to a T almost every to the, from the largest brands on the planet. Um, to the smallest, you know, social marketers, what we find is that they look at the data and they use the data to determine what happened. They don't always use the data. They don't consistently use the data to determine what they should do next. Um, and so hopefully, you know, if we do our job right, you know, we can help, uh, we can help some, uh, some, some marketers and brands uh, improve the quality of the content. So much money is being spent today to create content. And so what I, about, yeah. hey David, what about yeah. when you're looking at analyzing three or four, you know, a few of these companies and you've been doing it for quite some time, any, anyone that just jumped out and you said like, and you shared it with them and they were just like, oh, wow, like we were way off and I don't, you know, it was surprising maybe to them or to you. We have a couple examples and we cannot share them here. <laughs> but, um, but, but it rhymes with. <laughs> um, yeah. So they're, they're, they're big, uh, soft drink brands. Um, but I mean, so we, I mean, we, we find really fun things like, um, for example, uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, Facebook feed is, is just off the charts, <laughs> right? Because uh, he has such a fervent uh, audience. Um, other brands, Starbucks does really well, obviously. Uh, we're actually kind of working on a fun, um, we're working on a fun, hopefully we'll release it tomorrow, but it'll be kind of a, a breakdown of, um, uh, emoji usage across competing brands. And so kind of, you know, what's the score, you know, how do people use emoji when they interact with that brand? So we'll be releasing some of that uh, data over the next few days. But, um, but yeah, I mean, so there, there's always, there's sometimes I mean, Starbucks is not a surprise, right? Um, yeah. But there are, you do see surprises certainly um, with, with when, once you kind of start to look at the, the platform and the, and, the, and the data inside of it and the score, you know, really the, the core value that a lot of people get is they have one score and they can kind of compare their content and compare their, compare brands against the one score. So. Hey, hey David, I'm not sure if you already answered this, but Brett asks, how does it work with crowdsourced content? Brands are pulling from their community to source content. So that kind of goes back to what I said, or, or is that different? No, it's the same thing. Yeah. So um, if the brand posts a crowdsource uh, piece of content to their Facebook page or their Instagram page or even having I mean, interest, not really, but or even their YouTube, we'll know, um, you know, the brand would have to actually flag that and say this is crowdsourced or not so that we could identify it. But um, we don't look at anything but what the brand is posting to their direct channels. Got it. Or they can, yeah, they can ask and then reload it naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there has to be something that has gotten in the way of Twitter because that seems like a pretty important channel. But uh, probably because it's not that visual, right? Um, or it's not as visual as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> it's good there. They're working on it. <laughs> um, I'll, let, I'll let you answer that, David. Yeah. No, I mean, so if you look at the stats and the customer usage, um, our, we started, 
you know, we were fortunate enough to, uh, you know, be working with uh, Disney at the time um, and still are. We're, you know, so Twitter is just not, you know, for regular people, <laughs> for the average person, Twitter is not as big of a channel. Facebook drives the lion's share of the traffic, and that's what they're interested in optimizing from both the organic and the paid, uh, paid perspective. And then there, the secondary were the channels where they brands want to begin to leverage those channels, but they don't necessarily have the tools in place to leverage them. So it was Instagram uh, because Instagram is such a highly engaging platform. Um, and then Pinterest because of commerce and the commerce behind it and the traffic that it drives. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then YouTube because uh, by and large brands are investing more and more in video content and it can be repurposed so broadly, and then Twitter. So we'll, we'll get to it. But it's, it, it's a very, uh, Twitter's an interesting platform because it's so different than the other. There's not a, there's kind of like this random dialogue that happens and you have to capture hashtags and you have to capture retweets and you know, how do you quantify the number of retweets? It's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting platform. It probably acts more different than all of the other platforms that there are, so. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. A great so, question. so, what else haven't you told us that we need to know? Oh man. Um, so the ultimately the two areas that you'll see us or you know our, our customers will see us uh, kind of hopefully we can pioneer are um, so the, the thing that we're we're different today is that you know we we kind of roll everything up, give you much more data than you typically see in a typical analytics platform. We have a few products coming out before the end of the year. One of them is recommendations. Um, so we will actually, you know, kind of make clear recommendations rather than just kind of showing you the data. We'll kind of look at how you're, uh, we'll run a model, a specific model on your account and recommend the things that work the best for your account. Um, so kind of like, you know, there are some uh, rudimentary versions of this, you know, I think Buffer has it for time of day, right? Um, so, okay, this is what works best for time of day, but think about that for all the attributes of your content. Um, so we'll be, uh, we'll be rolling that out uh, fairly soon. Um, uh, you know, Facebook increasingly, um, there's been a lot of talk brands have to invest more in, and in, in any company has to invest more in paid, putting paid uh, behind Facebook. And so uh, recommending to you which, uh, which posts you should boost based on the engagement that we see. That's really super valuable. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, that's something that we're, you know, we're working really hard on right now. And then, um, and then uh, our, I think early next year, we'll do predictive. So uh, based on what we know about uh, the content that you've posted in your past and the interactions, uh, what piece of content, or what posts are you are preparing to post? And uh, we can kind of do a, you know, within 90 to 95% certainty, this is how it's going to perform. Um, it so predicted. What's that? <laughs> it's all statistics. It's not my claim. It's, it's, a, it's data scientist's claim. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so yeah, we, if, we, if we can't make a good prediction, we won't. But um, it's kind of, I mean, this is a movement, right? So you think about Nate Silver and the stuff that yep. he's done around statistics and, you know, being able to predict elections and, um, there's a lot now that we have so much data, uh, we can do a lot of really, and, and I mean, bigger trend is uh, we have now data, but we also have the computing power to do some of these really, what were pre re previously cost prohibitive, um, so that we can kind of bring to market new products that, you know, just weren't even, they weren't even possible when the companies that, you know, the set of companies, the tools that they use today, when they started building their, their products and platforms, this wasn't even possible. So we're trying to be the, you know, really we want to sit on top of the existing platforms and be kind of that next level intelligence recommendations uh, to you know, help you kind of make that next decision as opposed to kind of, you know, you having to do all the work. So David, you, you mentioned that you're looking at Twitter and possibly doing something with them with the, inside the platform. What about some of the, um, this is Lindsay's question. Um, what about live streaming? and some of the video social platforms out there that are popular right now. Is that something that you're looking at? I sure is really Not like what we're on right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, it, it's really, I mean, I, I like live streaming. Um, it, I don't know how, I mean, we would have to look at the audience ahead of time. This, I mean, I guess live streaming would be, would be really great for predictive, right? So you take whatever is live and 
Um, you know, if what I'm saying people hate because of the comments and scan the comments here on the right hand side and yeah, the questions, you know, people don't like them and the sentiment is negative. And I have a, a couple other talking points in my back pocket that I kind of pull out and, and switch the script. So, I mean, that, that, that's how, you know, maybe if I had a few fear implication, but you know, we haven't, we haven't, I mean, we don't have any plans to do live streaming just yet. It's, it's so such a cool and emerging market uh, uh, channel though. But what would be with, I mean, what is, I mean, what is one of the next one or two then? Or is there, is, it, is that too far out? Uh, for uh, platforms, yeah, that, no, it's gonna that you guys are gonna bring into the platform Snapchat. Yeah, so it's, I, I mean, so Snapchat has to open up first. Um, we're working with Pinterest. You know, there, there's a lot. I mean, yeah, so it, we follow what the customer demand actually is, and right now the the majority of the demand are on those four. Um, obviously, Snapchat, you know, is a you know it's a burgeoning market. Uh, burgeoning a uh, platform. Um, we want to do video really well, and that's a hard problem to solve. But we think that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of value in video, and you know we'll probably spend a lot of our time there next year. So, so in regards to the platform, if let's say you're a brand and you want to leverage the platform, what kind of pricing model is it? Is it a monthly service or is it a pro per project? No, it's monthly. So we right now we're doing two things. Um, so the we have a really basic plan that is ten dollars a month. Um, $9 a month actually. So you can, and it kind of just gets your feet wet. It allows you to load, um, it adds, allows you to add your profile um, on in, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, uh, and Facebook, as well as a, com a competitor profile on those platforms. And you, so you can really kind of take a look at how it works. Um, seven day trial. And then the next plan up, um, that, that plan doesn't have, I think you could look back 90 days on how things have performed historically across 90 days. That plan does not have recommendations or, you know, once we roll it out, uh, the next plan up is a uh, $200 a month. Um, it allows you to have, I think, I believe 25, uh, profiles across any, any of the platforms, um, gives you, uh, it'll give you recommendations and then, you know, it kind of, we walk up from there. Um, we are, we're actually doing something kind of cool and we're, we're excited about it. We're, and a number of our customers have been excited about it. We have something called Decisive Copilot where we're essentially, it's kind of like consulting E, if you will, um, where we're uh, saying, okay, what, it, you know, what we'll do a competitive analysis, kind of like what we did with the BuzzFeed case study, but almost on steroids where we kind of look at every action we could possibly find. We make recommendations for you on an ongoing basis. We kind of give you uh, uh, we kind of give you kind of analysis on how your campaign or how your account's doing. Um, and that, I think that's, yeah, that's an annual plan. That, if you don't want to figure it out yourself, you have a co-pilot from your team that'll help you. That makes sense. Exactly. And there, I mean, you, it's a data scientist, you know, so it's Buzzfeed hires ton, dozens of data scientists who are just sitting there crunching numbers every single day. And that's just not possible for that. You know, the small, you know, smaller teams. And so our goal is really to kind of give that type of service, that type of uh, insight to uh, every every brand, both large or small. Um, cool. Yeah. Makes sense. Let me see if I have any more. Well, thank you, David, for sharing uh, um, all this great information. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks so much thanks. for the time. Thanks for letting uh, me. <laughs> thanks for being so subjective. <laughs> <laughs> this was fun. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for um, for hanging out, for participating, for your great questions. You guys are awesome. That's it for this episode of Marketing Mash. You can share your thoughts by following us on Twitter and Facebook. Subscribe to our podcast to keep up with the show. And of course, you can always find us by visiting themarketingscope.com.